Welcome to Hunt Florida TV. I'm host Tony Young and on today's episode we're going to be talking about the new regulation changes for hunting zone D. I'm talking about that area of the state in the panhandle west of Tallahassee all the way over to Pensacola. Uh, hunting zone D has now been divided into two deer management units. Interstate 10 is now the dividing line between the two deer management units. South of I-10 we're calling that D1. North of I-10 we're calling that D2. Uh, there, there have been new antler regulations uh, unique to each one of those deer management units uh, on public land, wildlife management areas, as well as private land, and also changes to the antlerless deer season on private property in both of those deer management units respectively. The reason that I-10 was used as, a, as the uh, dividing line is because of the differences in habitat. Uh, north of I-10, you've got more of the uh, you know, more, a more fertile soil, you got more clay in the soil. Uh, south of I-10, uh, it's a lot more poor, uh, a lot more acidic. So what that, what that uh, basically uh, uh, accounts for, uh, as far as white-tailed deer goes, is the productivity. The productivity for white-tailed deer north of I-10 is greater than the productivity south of I-10. Now what do I mean by productivity? Uh, I mean uh, the ability for does to have you know, more than one fawn you know, at a time. Uh, the ability for deer uh, to, for bucks to grow um, uh, bigger antlers faster. And also the, uh, the fact that the deer are just normally a little bit heavier uh, north of I-10 where the soil is better. So because of that, there are different, uh, new, different antler regulations north of I-10 and south of I-10. Now one of the goals uh, with these new regulation changes in hunting zone D is to protect year and a half old bucks. It used to be that you could take uh, you know, a legal buck uh, in, that, in, that, in those neck of the woods, uh, had to have at least one antler that was at least five inches long, but that's not the case anymore, okay? South of I-10 in D1 has now gone to a forked rule. Basically, uh, legal bucks now have to have at least one antler that has two or more points on a side, and each of those points has to be at least an inch long. Uh, let's look at an example here. Here's an example right here. Now some people, let me get close here, some people might call that a point. They might call this a five point right here, but because that point right there is actually not an inch long, this is really just a four point. So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about an antler with two points on a side right there. So this is now a legal buck um, in, you know, in D1, which is south of I-10, okay? North of I-10 in D2, legal bucks now have to have three points on a side, at least three points on a side. Again, each point having to be at least one inch long. So you can look at this rack right here. This isn't a point right there because it's not an inch, but one, two, three, one, two, three. So either way you look at it, uh, this rack here, you know, is legal to take now um, north of I-10 and D2. So uh, there's also, there's an addition to that or I guess, uh, or an or, if you will, um, because of, uh, and we mainly did this for uh, the deer dog hunters. You know, if, if you've deer dog hunted before, a lot of times you don't have the opportunity to really get a good look at a deer because he's running and you don't really get to, you know, have the opportunity, the luxury of, of, of studying that rack for a long, long time before you pull the trigger. So um, what we've done is uh, in addition to the, uh, or I guess an or, you know, north of I-10, but legal bucks now have to have at least three points on one side or they have to have a main beam of at least 10 inches long. So let me show you, let me show you an example of this. Now, this is a four point, but if I take my tape measure and I measure this, you can see that it's about 10 and a half inches long. So this rack here, this buck would be a legal buck uh, north of I-10. I mean, of course it would also be legal south of I-10, but it would be legal north of I-10, not because it has three points on the side, because it does, it only has two, but because the main beam is more than 10 inches long. So oftentimes, you know, you might, uh, if, if, you don't get a, if you don't get to look at the brow tines, the brow tines are those G1s that are right here, which this, which this rack doesn't have. Oftentimes, uh, you know, you'll shoot a buck that you think's a six point, 
because maybe it had maybe it had some pretty high horns and then when you get them on the ground you see that it didn't have any brow tines and it's only a four point so that's why we added that um, just so people wouldn't get in trouble if they accidentally did that okay there is a um uh there's an exception to these new antler regulations and that is that youth hunters and i'm talking about 15 year olds and younger uh, may still take bucks with the five inch antler so they they're still doing it the old way uh, so what we're talking about here a lot of us would call this a cow horn spike but this antler i think i measured it earlier it was eight inches but definitely more than five inches so this is legal this is still legal to take this buck is still legal to take um, north of i-10 and south of i-10 by youth hunters 15 years old and younger but not anybody 16 and older okay there's also been a change like i said earlier uh in the antlerless deer season on private lands only okay um south of i-10 you know it used to be well it used to be you know, in hunting zone D, the antlerless deer season on private property ran seven consecutive days, you know, during that Christmas week. But there's been a change this year. Uh, south of I-10, uh, you now have two weekends. And when I mean weekend, I mean a Saturday, Sunday. You have the, you have the Thanksgiving weekend and you have Christmas weekend. Uh, that's the new antlerless deer season south of I-10 in D-1. In D-2, north of I-10, you have, you also have those same weekends Thanksgiving weekend, Christmas weekend, but you also have the opening weekend of muzzleloading gun season, and you have the weekend um, right before Christmas. So you have four weekends north of I-10, two weekends south of I-10. The Fish and Wildlife Commission created deer management units to allow more flexibility uh, in deer management, um, also uh, to help maintain a healthy deer herd, and also uh, I guess lastly, to improve hunting opportunities and hunter satisfaction. You know, hunters have been asking us over the years, you know, could we manage deer, you know, at a more local level? So that's what, uh, that's what deer management units, that's the whole concept of them. Now, the reason that the Fish and Wildlife Commission uh, made these changes to Hunting Zone D is because we had uh, done a lot of public outreach. Uh, our deer management program had reached out to the public through public meetings, uh, technical assistance group meetings, uh, teleconferences and online surveys. Uh, we polled farmers, uh, we polled landowners, uh, and we polled uh, hunters, of course. And uh, you know, the majority of these people, you know, this is what they wanted. Uh, they wanted to see the size of a deer herd um, maintained or slightly increased in some places, uh, especially south of I-10. They also wanted to, uh, they all wanted to increase their chances of seeing more bucks and have the opportunity, a better opportunity, of being able to harvest uh, bigger bucks. So that's why these antler uh, regulations, these you know, restrictions, these you know, greater restrictions have been put into place so that uh, our stakeholders uh, would be able to see that. So thank you for tuning in to Hunt Florida TV. Uh, to follow uh, these changes, uh, to know more about deer and deer hunting in Florida, go to myfwc.com slash deer. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, be safe out there and good luck to you.